Chris Lee and Blake Lovell of Southeastern 14, and it is getting closer to football time in Tennessee, Blake. We are doing this August the 4th. The Vols and Cavaliers kick off in our home area of Nashville in just a few weeks. Tennessee is about, as we do this, what a 28-point favorite with a 58.5 point over under. That makes for a predicted final of 53-15 to 15 Tennessee. We'll get into some other lines and things in a minute, other predictive metrics. Uh, but let's set the stage here. The Vols coming off an 11-2 and two season, an Orange Bowl win over Clemson. And then you got Virginia. And, and my goodness, I don't even – I don't even know what to say. You, of course, you had the tragic shooting that ended the lives of three players, affected so much in that program. Our hearts and prayers continue to go out to the folks in Charlottesville. But uh, back to football, Blake. We will get a college football opener in our hometown uh, in a matchup between two programs, one that's bred buttered a little bit more on defense heading into the season, it would seem, and, and one certainly that when you think of the balls under Coach Josh Heupel, you think offense. Yeah, I mean, it does seem like that's kind of the the equation here for how these two teams are going to win this season. I think Tennessee will continue to be how high powered can the offense be, and as we said, we think the defense is going to be um, should be improved in some areas thanks to just more experience and um, that kind of stuff. But on the same side, you know, for Virginia, it's they're going to have to win probably a lot of games on the defensive side, and and they're going to you know need that because I think as we'll talk about the offense is. Certainly still a work in progress. Uh, I think that's probably saying it um, nicely just in terms of where maybe they're at right now. Um, and again, in long in the process of, of what they need to do to be a much better offensive team. So, yeah, I mean, so it's, you know, kind of that matchup. Tennessee's offense against Virginia's defense, which was pretty good last season overall when you look at some of the numbers. Um, and, you know, as we say, Chris, though, the, the one big question I think in this game is, Everyone on the Tennessee side and a lot of people nationally are going to have their eye on Joe Milton and what this Tennessee offense looks like. We'll talk plenty about Joe Milton, but first let's talk about the Virginia offense, which a year ago averaged 67 snaps. The Cavaliers rushed it 4.9 yards per rushing play. Again, rushing play is not counting sacks. Those come out of that and come out of the passing numbers. The Vols gave up a fairly respectable four yards flat against the rush Virginia, 5.3 yards per pass play on the offensive side. That's awful. Tennessee, as I've said many times, if you look at the raw stats, Tennessee's pass defense was much maligned a year ago, but per snap, and again, if you're in a game with Tennessee, you're playing a lot of snaps. If you take out sacks, Tennessee averaged just 6.3 yards per pass play against. Not great, but again, not as bad as people perceive their pass defense to be a year ago. Virginia, and this is a real problem for, for the Cavaliers. They turned it over 3.3% of the time. Anything over 3% is, is awful. And Tennessee had a pretty respectable 2.2% of turnovers forced. I'd say anything over two is, is fair to good. The Vols were pretty good at forcing turnovers. This is a, a defense I think is a little bit better than people give it credit for. I get an offense that just was – Flat out awful is Tony Elliott went from air raid to pro style. They had a lot of talent coming back, and boy, they just did nothing with it a year ago, going from 34 and a half points a game to, to that number being cut in half to 17. Yeah, I mean, the offensive numbers, you know, I'm sure Virginia fans know, know them quite well. Um, what were they last in the ACC in scoring? I think they were second to last. You brought up the turnover situation and turnover margin, um, you know time of possession wasn't there because you know they just couldn't stay on the field and move the chains and have those extended type of drives when you just look at the numbers from last season so that's certainly a very important area um you know i think like you said corner sort of switching to a different type of offense and a more balanced offense can certainly help them in a lot of those different areas um in terms of just kind of finishing as low as they did in some of those key ones last year and yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's really just trying to see exactly where you're going to get from this offense, right? Because I'll save kind of the the trend for the defense when we talk about Virginia's defense in a second, but you just need more points, right? That's just what it comes down to. You have to improve in a lot of different areas. You know, you need to replace some production wide receiver, need to need to improve on the offensive line, quarterback play. Um, you know, I think there are still questions there. I know they've got Tony Musket coming in, the, the transfer from Monmouth. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think their top three – 
running backs return. Um, so, you know, can they be more con- consistent there in terms of just getting guys back at that position? And so I'm sure, I mean, for Virginia fans, they, they just want to see more points, right? And I think that's pretty simple enough is to say we just need to score more, not put that pressure on our defense. And if they can do that, you know, sure, they could challenge the Tennessee defense a little bit. But like you said, I, I think Tennessee's defense – at times got a little bit too much criticism last season um, because I think they were better than people think statistically. Uh, but but still, it's not to say that they can't improve in some areas and, and not that they, they have to improve in some areas uh, if they're going to be you know a team that could perhaps challenge for the SEC East title. Yeah, when, when your offense is snapping the ball every 3.2 seconds or, or whatever it was, yeah. I'm, I'm being facetious, then, then your defense is going to give up some yards just because there's going to be more plays in the game. People have yeah. to get used to that concept. I think most people have, but you still do hear some total offense and, and total defense stuff that, that doesn't reflect well on the Vols. But again, that's that's not an accurate reflex, reflection of, of the truth there. Um, you mentioned Tony Musket at Monmouth. He completed nearly... 65% of his throws the last two years for about 4,600 yards, 42 touchdowns, 18 picks. Lost several receivers, I believe, did Virginia. Malik Washington, the Northwestern transfer, caught 65 balls for 694 yards and a score a year ago. Running back by committee, you mentioned that. A lot of guys back. Nobody stands out. A lot of guys in that four to, to maybe 4.7 yards a carry range. At Tennessee, let's talk about the Vols defense and the personnel. That whole defensive backfield, it, it seems like returns. I think they've got nine or ten guys that played significant roles last year back in the defensive backfield. You've got Aaron Beasley, who should be one of the premier linebackers in the league this year, returning there. Up front, you got Tyler Barron back for another year. Omari Thomas, who is a potential first-team All-SEC guy. Again, I think personnel-wise, and I think they filled a few holes with transfers, too. Uh, I, I don't know this is – a, a spectacular defense, but I, I think it's probably a solid one. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I, I do. I think it's um like we said, and I think we talked about this in the preview video we did for Tennessee. If you want to watch that, you can the season preview. We just said, look, I mean, it's got to help that some of these guys are just have another year of experience under their belt too. And I think just, you know, having that going into the season and, and knowing, like you said, the challenges of playing defense with an offense like this, that, that, did what Tennessee's offense did last season and uh, being able to adapt to that. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think there are certainly some pieces there. And I think you and I probably more so, Chris, than maybe most people last season were kind of on that train of, hey, I don't know if we're giving Tennessee's defense enough credit. We realize they're not perfect. But um, in in relation to the offense and, and kind of, again, the, the challenges that perhaps can come along with that, yeah, I mean, I, I think they're, they've certainly got some talented players on that side of the ball, just consistency and those kind of things. Sure, you can always improve in those areas, but um, I think this seems to me at least looking at the matchup like a game where you know we could really see some of those guys that really do stand out on Tennessee's defense have a big game and, and kind of control the dynamic and, and really limit what Virginia could do offensively here. Okay, when the Vols have the ball, that is when I st- turn towards the screen if they're not already because, boy, it was spectacular a year ago. Tennessee ran 73 plays offensively on average per game. Virginia was on the field a lot, too, by the way, 72 snaps. You don't all like how that lines up if you're a Virginia fan or coach. Tennessee last year, again, we, we tend to think of the Vols airing it out. Tennessee actually ran it 52% of the time last year, averaged five and a half yards per run play. Virginia gave up four and a half yards per run play. The, the pass numbers, my goodness, 9.1 yards per pass play. That counts the times they were sacked to come out of that. Uh, so Virginia was actually pretty good on the pass defense side, allowing five and a half yards per throw. Here's one thing about the Vols that, that really pops too, Blake. Tennessee turned it over 1.2% of the time last year. That is a phenomenal rate. Virginia forced turnovers on just 1.8% of its defensive snaps. Uh, Just, again, we will get into the personnel and how that's changed. But, uh, again, just everything leans the Vols' way when you add up the numbers from a year ago. And and you presume there will be some similarities, which I do believe there will be. Yeah, I mean, look, I think if you're just looking at if you're – which, you know, we're an SEC channel. If you're an SEC Tennessee fan looking at Virginia – I mean, this this defense was not bad last season. I think you have to kind of put that in the context of everything they allowed. I think they're only 24 points per game, which I know is, you know, more than three touchdowns. But still, 
if you look at it from that standpoint, Chris, here's the point I was going to make about Virginia's defense. Now they have to replace, you know, key guys, especially we look at that secondary, right? We talked about, you know, Fentrell Cypress in that Florida state LSU game and kind of, you know, him transferring there. And so you lose a guy like that, um, have a good pass rush. I think on this, this Virginia defense, looking at some of this, even again, if the numbers can maybe not fully support some of these areas, but if you look at some of those games last year that Virginia had, it's like, Chris, is we're going to label the right fight, rock fight games, right? We do this with SEC basketball. We talk about the rock fight games. I mean, they lose a game to Miami in overtime, 14 to 12. You know, they beat Georgia Tech 16 to 9. Um, Syracuse, 22 uh, 20. You know, that game against Old Dominion, 16 14. You know, so they played several, quite a few games like that. And they lost some close games last season, even giving up some points, right? They gave up 31 points to North Carolina, lost that game 31 28. That's not bad, really, when you think about it, right? So I think it's if you're Tony Elliott and we talk about you know which side of the ball certainly you feel like you're you've made the most progress on Virginia fans, I'm sure would would agree. It's it's on the defensive side. So maybe there's something they can do here in game one. And I think that's important because if you're looking at it from Tennessee's offense, you talked about the turnover stat, right? Well, Joe Milton's stepping in now. And, you know, we talked about it. I mean, they're they're are, there are some people who are fully on the Heisman hype train. There are other people who want to see it. They want to see him prove it in a 12-game schedule that he can be what Hendon Hooker was, just as good or better or whatever you know label you want to put on him. And so I, I don't think this is the easiest defense to see necessarily in game one because I do think there are some things that um, Virginia has, has at least did well last season, right? But it goes back to what you talked about, though. Tennessee's offense is just such a different animal. And it's part, it's just the system itself. And you mentioned the running game, all the weapons they have at wide receiver. There are so many options for Tennessee. So even if you feel like, you know, you're a solid defense, a defense that has done some things well in the past, maybe go back to last season, find some things you did well against good offensive teams. Tennessee has just been so much different and they're so hard to prepare for. Um, And so again, everything goes back to Joe Milton and how efficient he can be in that offense. If he comes out clicking, They've got too many weapons there. We've talked about them, whether it's Brew McCoy, whether it's from Mel Keaton, Squirrel. I mean, the running back group, you know, that you could put either one of those running backs among the top backs in the SEC. So, yeah, I mean, I'm trying here in terms of the Virginia side to to give you a reason why maybe the defense can do some things to hold off Tennessee. But in all honesty, Tennessee's defense, or excuse me, Tennessee's offense could be fantastic, but a lot of that's going to depend on what we see from Joe Milton. Well, let, let me give you a key from the Virginia side. And, and this is a biased answer because he played high school ball just minutes from where I live. It's Chico Bennett, who's a Georgia Tech transfer, big rangy athlete, can get after the passer. I've seen him get, in, get some preseason all ACC, ACC mention. Look, if you're going to beat the Vols, you got to get some stops. You got to force some turnovers, maybe a strip sack. That's a kid that if you're going to find a key to victory for the Cavaliers, it, it probably is going to have to involve him. Uh, but for Tennessee, man, I, I look at the, this team, and we talked about on defense, so much of this team is back, man. Uh, it's a different quarterback, but Joe Milton last year. And, look, one of the big questions in the league is which Joe Milton do we see? Do we see the one that you know couldn't hit the broad side of the barn a couple of years ago? Do we see the guy last year that threw 10 touchdowns and, and no picks and, and looks like a, a Greek god? I mean, just physically – so put together, an impressive kid. And, and people will, will say, well, it's Joe Milton. He's not going to get the job. But look, look at what Josh Heupel has done with quarterbacks. Hendon Hooker was not a Heisman candidate before he got to Knoxville. So I, I, I think Joe Milton is probably going to have a good year. The receivers, Brew McCoy was a five-star recruit, had a nice year. Ramel Keaton, I'm, I'm guessing, maybe is that guy that steps up as their Bolitnikoff winner type guy, but it could be Squirrel White. It could be Dante Thornton, who's, I think, the fastest guy in that group. Maybe it's none of them because maybe you got, you know, five guys that catch 700 yards worth of balls. That that could happen. Um, the run, I thought they had a really underrated running back room a year ago. Jalen Wright, Jabari Small, Dylan Sampson, the third team, or might be more explosive than any of them. They're all back. We talked about how they ran the ball well. Three offensive linemen back. They got John Campbell to play left tackle, who started, I think, every game a year ago at Miami. And they they got a Texas transfer who played something along the lines of 750 snaps. Like, they've got the guys that made the plays for the most part. Well, I mean, 
look, <laughs> losing your quarterback was no small deal. But again, if you think Milton can can be a plug and play guy, and maybe that's overstating it, but maybe it's not, then then they're not bad off because they they've got just about everybody else back who helped out a year ago, and they bring in a couple of really experienced offensive linemen, Blake. I mean, even if he's not perfect, he's got enough help around him to bring him up to a level to where he can have a lot of success. Um, again, even if he's not perfect. And so, and one other thing, I mean, he's not throwing interceptions since he's been at Tennessee, right? I'm not saying every game he's played in has been every, but like he's thrown 12 touchdowns, zero interceptions. So that's the key, I think, for Tennessee this season, right? Even just going beyond this game is just take care of the football because you talked to you brought up the stat earlier. Think about how good they could be when they just they just take care of the football. That's a big part of the game. And if he can do that, again, there's enough explosive playmakers around him that they can go off and make big plays at any time, and that's going to be the big challenge for Virginia, I think, in this game. Okay, we let off the show with the, the Vegas line and the predicted score. According to that line, it would be 43-15 Tennessee. You look at some other models, FPI has Tennessee favored by 21 in this. SP Plus has the balls by 32 points. Man, that's a lot for two Power 5 schools. Yeah. Look, I, I just – when I look at Virginia under Tony Elliott, and, and I don't want to be too critical because this is a program that just went through so much a year ago that, that transcends football. But I just didn't really like what they did under him. I didn't like the way the offensive production just dr- got driven into a ditch. Defensively, I think the stats suggest they're pretty good. But you've seen the Vols destroy good defenses. This is going to be in Nashville. I'm presuming it's going to be 90%, maybe more Tennessee fans. That stadium, I would think, would be full. I, I just have a hard time seeing Virginia keeping this one close. And I, I think that 28-point line, goodness, that that might even be low when this is all said and done. Well, I mean, like you said, it's you think about what Bronco Mendenhall did there. He was there for, what, six seasons I mean, got them to what, Chris, an Orange Bowl appearance. I think that was what, 2018, 19, something like that. Um, and yeah, so you're Tony Elliott, you're coming in, you're taking over, you know, you're trying to, you know, put your own kind of stamp on things. Obviously, you talked about such a just a, a tragic finish to the season where you you don't play your last two games because of everything that happened. And yeah, I mean, it was it was not exactly, you know certainly what they wanted in year one, probably as a staff. And again, that's even just going beyond um, the, the tragedy at the end of the season. Um, so, but, but I think at least, you know, on the defensive side, again, maybe there are some things they can try to figure out. But like you said, I just, here's what I have in my notes specifically, right? This is a team that had, str- had a real big problem winning the turnover margin last year. And what do you have to do to beat Tennessee, Chris? You got to score points. And yeah, I think that's the issue here for me if I'm trying to to pick this game is I just don't know. I don't see enough point production right now for Virginia based on what they have coming in because I think a lot of it is just unproven talent that you're – you see the potential, but you just want to see it before you're probably going to kind of, you know, make that pick. Yeah. So I'm with you. I think this is – if Tennessee comes out clicking early, I mean, I, you know, you talked about, it, I, I'm trying to think of a score in my head, like 42, 10, something like that. Sure. Like, I mean, that's just what Tennessee can do. We saw that too many times last year. They can put up points in an absolute hurry, even against good defenses. Um, and I just think that's going to be the challenge, at least looking at it now for Virginia is where do you find enough points to keep up with Tennessee? And I just think that's going to be a big challenge. So I'm kind of with you. I think, I think Tennessee should win this one going away and, Again, it's just all going to depend on what we see from Joe Milton. But I think that he's, I think he comes out ready to go here, and and I think they they try to make a pretty big splash here early on. Yeah, we're not professional batters, but if you had to take a stand on one side of the twenty eight or the other, I, I think I would go on the Tennessee side. What do you think? Yeah, that's what I would probably go with too. Just given the points and what's the over under on this one? I don't remember what we had on this. The um, over under is fifty eight and a half. And again, I, I like oh, to take that and tough. make that into the score forty three to fifteen. Well, here's why it's tough. I don't know that I see Virginia getting fifteen. I I can see Tennessee getting forty three. Now, is Tennessee going to put up sixty? I don't think so because Virginia's defense is good enough. But I, I don't know. This is. I'd like the spread more you than could, I like you, the total on this one. I yeah, think it, I, th- I think I, 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 like I, I do too. Yeah, right. So. But we're not professional guys. Right. 
We are not. Keep that so in we, mind. We won't, I will not advise you on, on that. that. Right. We, we we give you our insight, and it's thoughtful insight, and we watch a lot of SEC football. So we just keep running picks. what it's worth. That's all we do. We just running pick <laughs> games. We Hey, we'll have a betting presence here on the, the channel here soon. We enough. will. There's a teaser, but – don't don't take it from us from a betting standpoint. We just we're just giving you the 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 eyeball tests. So there you go. Yeah, all right. We are going to be breaking down every single SEC football game this season and a lot more. Best way to catch all our content, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, tell a friend that helps us out. For Blake Lovell, I'm Chris Lee. We're Southeastern 14. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again soon.